Stay tuned for Airgun Detectives. Welcome to another episode of Airgun Detectives. I'm your host, JC, and today we're going to take the mystery out of the Bara 1866 CO2 rifle. But before that, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. It doesn't cost you anything. It's absolutely free, but it really helps support the channel. Also, check out my website. You have the opportunity, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I got various t-shirts. I've got hats. I got our Generation 2 bipods. And then if you guys have the Gambo brake barrels, I also have the trigger screws for the cat and sat triggers. So check that out when you have the opportunity. All right, let's get back to our 1866 cowboy rifle. This is the CO2 version of the cowboy rifle. And it's a lever action rifle and it holds 10 shells. These BB shells, it holds 10 shells. And when you fire the gun, the shells are actually <coughs> ejected. And so you cycle through and each shell after it's expended comes out of the uh, rifle, which is very realistic. This is powered by two 12 gram CO2s. Where they go is in the, they made this very fancy, if you look at the bottom of the stock, it's very fancy and there's a little button right here. <clears throat> and you push that button and this opens up. And what you have in here is you've got your wrench it sits right in here, your Allen wrench. Pull that out. <coughs> and then you have your, your piercing tube, which is right in there. That's what the Allen wrench uses. And it takes two um, 12 gram CO2s, and one of them goes nose down, the other one goes nose up. You crank that down, it pierces the back one, you fire the rifle, it pierces the second CO2. So, pretty trick little setup there. This rifle it actually comes and it shoots steel BBs, 0.177 caliber BBs. And again, these are the shells. You load the BBs in the back of the shells. You've seen these, very familiar. Same as the Schofield pistols, just like those. Now, you do have an option on this. This does come, as I said a moment ago, with a smooth bore barrel and it shoots steel BBs, the 0.177 caliber 4.5 BBs. You have the option to purchase a rifled barrel for it. These come in both 177 and 22 caliber. And you'll get a rifled barrel and then you'll get the appropriate shells. You'll get 10 shells, 10 pellet shells that comes with it. But you have your options of either caliber. And in the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how you swap this barrel out because it's a pretty easy process, it really is. Anyway, these rifles, they come with an actual 18 inch barrel. The rifle overall is 38 and a half inches. And it's not a light rifle. This is just under seven pounds. It's about six and three quarter pounds. So it's a solid, solid, realistic feeling rifle. I think the uh, faux wood, whatever you want to call it, um, is just remarkable. It looks like real wood. It feels like real wood. And it's just, they did a really, really good job. It's hard to believe that's actually synthetic. It really is. Uh, this does have open sights on it. Uh, the back sight here, let me flip this around. Maybe you can see it better. The back sight here actually will flip up for a peep sight. So that flips up, you actually have a peep sight. Or you could just have your conventional. Uh, they're non adjustable, they're just fixed sights, just the way they are. However, it does come with a little teeny Picatinny rail right here. And what's great about that is you can put a red dot sight on it, which I'm going to during the accuracy and the plinking sessions, just so these tired eyes has a nice. Um, really good sight picture. And then we can see what the actual really um, potential is this as far as accuracy goes. So that, that's a touch of class, that little one there. Now they claim this is gonna shoot around 600 feet per second with BBs and ambient temperature is the key to that. So if it's a nice warm day, it's gonna shoot hotter. Obviously, if it's a cooler day, it's not going to have quite the velocity. Unfortunately, we got a windy, cool day for us. So it's in the, in the low 50s, and we've got a lot of wind going on. So well, we'll see how we do. We'll go out and test this thing and uh, see how it goes. Now, this comes in both gold or a black finish. So whatever you decided um, your preference is, you have your option of either one. So gold or black. I think the gold's a little bit more expensive than the black finish, but you guys can check that out. All right, let's go out and test this rifle, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. So stay tuned for the next segment. 
All right, let's test our Barra over the chrono, see how well it does. So I got BB shells in here right now. We're gonna shoot five shots over the chrono with the BB shells. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap the barrel out. And we're gonna to go to 22 caliber and we'll chrono it again and see how it does on that. But let's, uh, let's go with the BBs first. We're just gonna be using the basic Barra Zinc BBs. They're uh, five point screen. And let's just do five shots. Hopefully I'm not gonna get blown away here. It's really windy today. And it's not the best CO2 weather. It's in the mid 50s right now. So this is gonna do a lot better in warmer weather. So let's see how well we do here. All right, shot number one. That was an error. Let's see if we can get past that error. Shot number two. 564. Shot number three. 546. Five thirty-two, five thirty-four, do one more, and five thirty-two. Like I said, it's not the best CO2 weather. It's a little chilly today, as far as our weather goes. So I would imagine this would hit more than six hundred mark in a warmer day or summertime. So you know, CO2 is definitely dependent on the ambient um, temperature. So, anyway, let's try it with the uh, pellet version. All right, now we're going to test our 1866 with uh, the 22 caliber pellets. So we got the 22 caliber barrel installed, got our 22 caliber shells, and we're going to go with the 12 grain lead pellet. We're just going to shoot five shots over the crony. Let's just see how we make out. Again, not a very warm day, so I'd expect a lot more on a on a much more um, uh, climate friendly day. And let's talk about CO2 is directly affected on ambient temperature. So let's see where we're at. All right, shot number one. 489. Shot number two. 480. Shot number three. 482. Shot number four. 477 and we got one more shot number five 470 well there you go that's your 22 caliber over the crony so not too bad for a 12 grain lead pellet all right let's move on to the next segment all right let's test out our bear 1866 for a little accuracy okay I did something a little bit more challenging here it's a co2 rifle but we came all the way back to our 20 yards that we use our brake barrel distance as. And I said, let's just see how well it groups. So what we're going to do is we're going to shoot uh, five shots with the BBs and the smoothbore. And then I'm going to change out the barrel. And we'll come back and we'll shoot it with the pellets and we'll see how accurate it is. And then we can have a, a total comparison as far as the two goes. But I'll go ahead and check out our distance. It's a usual distance. You can see it's our 20 yards. And we're just going to be using these small uh, four inch splatter burst targets. I'm hoping I can get all the BBs actually on the target. I did a little practice and I was. So we'll see what type of grouping we can get out of our BBs. We'll just be using our regular Barra zinc BBs. And uh, again, we're going to shoot five shots. Let's just see how well it groups. All right. Oh, and I did put a little uh, red dot sight on here just so I can get the best accuracy as possible. So let's uh, see how well we do. All right, shot number one. At least we're on uh, we're on paper there. Shot number two. Shot number three. Shot number four. And one more. Hey, at least we're all on paper still. This is good. This is good. And our final shot. All righty. Okay, that's not bad for a smooth bore BB gun at 20 yards. Think about it. We're pushing this thing back probably the maximum distance um, you should probably be shooting. But we got everything on paper on a 4-inch target, so that's not bad. But uh, let's see how well the pellet uh, does. And we're going to bump up to the 22 caliber. So let's, let's check that out. 
All right, let's see how we do with the 22 caliber now. We put the 22 caliber barrel in there. We're going to shoot just the uh, hobby pellets. They're a 12 grain lead pellet. We're at the same distance, exact same distance. But let's see how well this one groups. All right. Can't get much better than that. All right, shot number two. Shot number three. Shot number four. And one more. Wow. You know, overall, that's actually a really good group, except for the one that just kind of flew just a little bit to the outside of the left there. Other than that, that's, that's a pretty tight group. I mean, well under one inch. So CO2 rifle at uh, 20 yards, not too shabby. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the next segment. Okay, let's test out the trigger on our Ibarra 1866. I'm going to tell you right now, guys, these triggers are absolutely incredible. So light, so smooth. So I'm anxious to see what it reads. I'm going to say well under, well under two pounds in my opinion. So let's see where we're at. All right. We are ready. Well, I was wrong. It's exactly two pounds. Two pounds. And then we got less than half an ounce there. So we're right at two pounds. So it's a two pound trigger. It is one smooth trigger. You're going to really enjoy this one, I'm telling you. All right, let's uh, move on to the next segment. All right, let's do a little plinking with our 1866. We're at the same distance, our 20 yards, that we did the accuracy test at. And uh, why don't you go ahead and check out what we got set up there. Check that out real quick. As you can see, we got some steel targets. Uh, we got a little shotgun shell. A little aluminum can outside, a pellet can. Anyway, let's just see how well we do. We'll uh, start on the bottom, start on the right, work our way to the left, and then uh, we'll work our way under the top. So let's just see how well we do. <clears throat> All right. Gotta like it. And let's see if we get that can. with that little metal pipe there at the end. Yep. And let's hit the top row. How about the shotgun shell? Can we get the shotgun shell? Yes, we can. And how about the little cap next to it? Ah. Well, we nicked it anyway. We'll come back for that. We got rounds left. And the pellet can. And the steel, whatever that is, ram. There you go. Got to like it. Okay, we got another. Yeah, it's got another round left. Let's see if we can get that little cap that's on its side and finish this thing off. Yes. Got to like it. Yeah, this thing is pretty doggone accurate for a CO2. <laughs> it really is. Pelican and not too shabby. All right. Hey, let's move on to the next segment, and we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Well, how did our 1866 uh, CO2 cowboy rifle do? I think it did great. It really did great. But it's like any uh, review that I do, let's talk about negatives first, and then we'll get into the positives. Uh, one of my negatives is the fixed sights on this. They're not adjustable. I wish there was some type of at least an elevation adjustment, but there is no adjustment on these fixed sights. They're set just the way they are. It is nice, however, that they did offer the little Picatinny rail on here because then we could put a red dot or something like that. So that kind of balances out a little bit. But speaking of positives, let's talk about the positives. First, I got to talk about the just the fit and finish of this rifle. It's amazing. This um, synthetic stock or faux wood stock, whatever you want to call it, um, is amazing. It really is. You would swear it's real wood. It looks that good. It feels that good. It's not, but it looks like it. It's great. Also, I love how solid this rifle is. This definitely, when you pick this thing up, it feels like a genuine 
center fire rifle because it is heavy like I said it's just under seven pounds and it's a solid solid rifle so this would definitely not be confused as a toy I like the ejecting shells which is great whether you're shooting BBs or pellets it's very realistic when you actually um, cock that le um, lever action and then the shell ejects of course it can be a little bit of a pain if they roll around on the ground then you got to go pick them up but that's okay but that's part of the realism of this rifle so I like that uh, what else do I really like about this? It had good accuracy. You guys saw that. Okay, you saw with the BBs, and I moved all the way out to 20 yards, and the BBs actually had a decent group over around an inch, and then the pellets were just tremendous. The 22 caliber pellets were tremendous. I mean, you saw that both in the accuracy and the plinking session. And speaking of barrels, let me show you real quick um, how to go ahead and install the pellet barrels on these guns. Remember they come both in 177 and 22. This is the 22 caliber that we did. So let me show you the installation process as far as that goes. Okay, I'm going to show you how to change the barrel out on your Barra 1866 CO2 rifle. Okay, one thing you want to make sure that there's no CO2s in it, no shells in it, it's completely empty. So once you've got that done. Okay, here's your actual barrel kit. In the barrel kit, I'll show you what you get here. Obviously you get your shells, and we're doing the 22 caliber here, and you got your new 22 caliber barrel. Okay, what you want out of here, there's a little adapter. Get that out of here. So what we're gonna use right now is the barrel and the adapter. Okay, tools that you're gonna need. You're just gonna need soft mallet and a punch. That's it. That's all the tools that you're going to need here. Okay, uh, one thing I'm going to point out here. So you've got your Barra instructions here. Uh, these are a little confusing because this looks like it's showing the bottom pin is the pin that you want to remove, and that is not the pin you want to remove. This is the pin that you're going to remove right here. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just show you step by step how we go about this. Okay, so this is the first thing we want to do. This pin needs to come out. But this is the gnarled end on this end, so we want to flip this thing over. Line up your punch in there, and we just want to tap this out. See, here's your pin right here. I'm just going to pull that out. Okay, once that's pulled out, just set that off to the side so it doesn't get lost here. You just need to work this housing forward. Just wiggle it back and forth. You see it separating. It's coming loose. Boom. That's it. So you're going to pull this part. Just set that off to the right. You want to pull your barrel out. Make sure there's a little sleeve that goes on the end of this barrel right here. You want to get this, obviously, out of the way. So this barrel you're going to set off to the side. This is your new barrel. And you'll see that this, this end is uh, machined down, it's smooth, and then there's a little ridge in this, edge, this side. So the ridge side, you want to take this little sleeve and you want to slide this on. Now, this can only go in one way. So you're going to slide the barrel in, obviously in the top portion of this. And if you'll see, there is, right here, there's a small notch on this side and a larger notch on that side. Well, this rubber sleeve corresponds to that. So you're just gonna slide that in in the notch, just like that. So the smaller notch on this side, larger notch on that side, okay? So you're set, so your barrel's in there. Now you just gotta put it back together and you're just gonna slide this back in, just like this, and you're gonna wedge it in, just shake it, shake it, shake it. There you go. Now we're gonna take our pin, we're just gonna reverse our direction. Pin's gonna go in this way. So you want the gnarled end outward towards us, and the pin's going to go in this direction. So let's tap this pin in. Almost there. There you go. So you just want you actually just want this pin flush in here, and then you're good to go. But that's it. That's all there is to changing that barrel.
Okay, so you saw how simple it was to swap out that barrel. Yeah, there's not much to it, and you don't have to be um, too mechanically inclined to do that. It's a pretty simple process, but I laid that one out for you. Continuing on the positives on this, the trigger on this rifle is fantastic. It is just smooth, and I, I just, I really like the trigger. And there is, by the way, there is a safety on this where you have to, just like the real rifle, you have to put pressure upward on the cocking handle in order for the rifle to fire. Because if you don't do that, see, it won't fire. So you gotta put a little bit of pressure on it and then it'll actually fire. But what a smooth trigger. A lot of fun to shoot. This rifle is a lot of fun to shoot. And good for the whole family. Think about zero recoil. Um, couple other things. This uh, CO2 loading style, I'm just gonna give you guys a little, uh, just a little hint, a little inside uh, trick on some of these. Some of these uh, loading systems, when you load these uh, CO2s in the rifle, and this is the stackable one, and it's not unique to this rifle, there's other rifles that have it, but you have the, uh, let me pull this out, you have the part that screws in here, the pier piercing valve. And what happens sometimes, and it just, it happens, it doesn't matter what model, what brand of rifle, but sometimes you won't be able to get the second CO2 pierced. And sometimes that has to do with just a little spacing or what have you. So the trick what you do here is watch this. And this works 99% of the time. So you take your CO2s, and your first CO2, as I said before, is going to go in with the tip downward. So we drop this in there, it goes, tip goes downward. So that one goes down in there. Okay, take a dime, and I've showed you guys this before. Just drop a dime in there in between, and it'll lay flat in there. And then drop your second CO2 in, right? And that creates just enough space, but puts just a little bit more, um, it puts the uh, CO2 a little tighter against the um, piercing pin. And then just crank this thing down, and crank this thing down substantially. Don't be a wimp. I mean, actually, when it when you feel that it stops, go past that even just a little bit farther. Okay, and then 99% of the time, both those CO2s will be pierced. Also, there's another trick, guys. If you don't feel like using two CO2s, let's just say you don't want to shoot a whole lot, but you want to shoot, drop an empty one in there. Drop an empty one in there first, and then drop your full one in second and then when you pierce it it'll just run off the one co2 you're gonna get half the shots but like i said if you're not gonna do a whole lot of shooting then you're gonna be saving a co2 so just remember that trick so overall how would i rate this rifle um i'm gonna have to say four and three quarter stars i think it's a i think it's a great rifle i think it's something if you guys are into lever action rifles which i like a lot this is definitely one you have to add to your collection. I personally prefer shooting the pellets. They're much more accurate. And I like the option of the 22 caliber and the 177. You guys could purchase both those barrels, go back and forth. And then if you want to just go very um, economical, you could just shoot BBs. BBs are so cheap. So this gives you the option. You can shoot all three, still BBs, 177 pellets or 22 caliber pellets. So you guys have the option. It does give you the versatility, but overall, it's a great rifle. It really is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Air Gun Detectives. Don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. Until next time, I hope you and your families are all doing well. So take care, and God bless.